Ghostbusters is one of the most legendary movies ever made. It's a movie everyone knows, no matter the age or generation. It's one of the rare cases where everything went right and was done right. The actors are great, fittingly cast, and have all great screen chemistry. The visuals are fantastic, even if they do feel a bit outdated by today's standards. And of course, the soundtrack is legendary, in part due to Ray Parker's famous Ghostbusters song that he ripped off from Hugh Lewis, and because of the great work of El Elmer Bernstein. Ghostbusters is legendary and probably one of the most iconic 80s movies and I'd even say one of the greatest movies in cinema history. It has the perfect mix of suspense, comedy and action while never losing track of the story or getting distracted with unnecessary details. But what makes it shine more than the actual story are the characters, in particular the Ghostbusters. They dominate each scene they are in and you can't wait to see what kind of adventures or wild inventions to catch ghosts they come up with. This is one of those movies you can watch over and over again and it will never get old. The movie shines in big parts because it doesn't take itself too seriously but also isn't trying to be a parody or a complete joke. Sure, it's a comedy but it portrays the world in a more serious way and honestly, despite this movie being listed as a family friendly movie, it does feature plenty of darker and more mature jokes. Some of the jokes and scenes are definitely the type of scenes that you as a child never understood but when you got older you finally got them. The black humor does not take center stage here, most jokes are not dark, but it's definitely present and gives Ghostbusters a certain unique charm. I believe the second movie lost this charm when they decided to go into a much more family friendly direction and that in turn caused it to be worse than the original. Although Ghostbusters 2 is far from bad, it's still a great movie. It takes us on a journey journey and the character of Venkman in a way feels like a stand in for the viewers. He starts out in total disbelief, purely motivated by money and fame and slowly comes face to face with the fact that ghosts are real and he now has to fight them. It also makes you wonder how this would work in real life. It makes sense that someone would open a business of hunting the supernatural rather than ride around in an old Chevy with his brother hunting monsters in secret, always being broke. The movie knows when to be funny, when to be provocative and when to be serious. Because of this, everything happening feels natural and no matter how over the top things get, it doesn't seem out of place. Proton Pack and Ghost Popper Gun, each sold separately. One of the best things about Ghostbusters is the charisma all of the actors have, be it the main cast or side characters. The Ghostbusters team pretty much steals most scenes, especially Bankman, whose wild mood swings and almost monotone reactions are comedic gold. I don't want to say that he carries the movie, but he definitely feels like the main character of the movie, as he has the most screen time and his lines are honestly the most hilarious ones. It's interesting how it walks the line between some more mature themes while mixing them with humor. Not many movies manage to do that and it often ends up really bad or cringe like in the 2015 remake. A remake that honestly should have never happened in the first place. The special effects in this movie are a bit dated, especially if you're watching this on modern TVs or computers, but it never feels immersion breaking or distracting. In fact, the dated visuals actually give the movie its own charm. That said, some of them are still great and while I wouldn't call this movie creepy or scary, it does have a bit of a mysterious atmosphere, especially at the beginning. It never gets creepy, but there is one scene in particular that always scared me as a child.
Looking back at it, it's still kind of creepy and you can't tell me that when you first saw this scene as a 5 or 6 year old, you didn't crap your pants. The ghosts are the best part of the movie despite not having as much screen time as you'd think. They are hilarious anytime they appear and the chaos they cause is fun to watch. Of course, what would be a great supernatural movie without some big world ending event? The arrival of Gozer might be one of the most famous examples of a big demonic threat to the world and has been referenced in movies and TV shows ever since because of how well it's written and presented. Ghostbusters slowly builds up suspense and hints at something unusual happening by using one of the best explanations in movie history. According to this morning sample, it would be a Twinkie 35 feet long, weighing approximately 600 pounds. That's a big Twinkie. When the ghosts start roaming free and terrorizing the city, you see how dire the situation is and also the dark sense of humor these ghosts have. You also wonder how this would be explained in real life and how people would deal with it. Hearing about Slimer eating all the hot dogs on the news must be the weirdest experience ever. That said, the lore we get is still pretty interesting. Secret societies, evil cults and demonic forces are probably the basics for every horror movie, but the way this movie lays it out is different. It's done with such ease and humor and it's always easy to follow. You always know exactly what's going on and who is who, even if you may have some questions about it. But that's what makes it so great because again, we as viewers are in a way similar to Venkman who asks all the questions we could have. <laughs> The best part about the movie are the main Ghostbusters. They dominate any scene they are in and we want to spend more time with them because of how funny and charismatic they all are. Anytime something is happening, they are painfully unaware of their surroundings, hyper aware, excited, full of adrenaline or indifferent, all at the same time. Watching them interact with each other is amazing because of how smooth their dialogue flows and how well they play off each other. They have great on-screen charisma that makes them lovable and almost gives you the feeling of them being your friends. The side villain, Walter Peck, is also one of the best characters in the movie. His actor perfectly plays him in such an unlikable and smug way that we also want to sucker punch him right in the face or kick his balls. It's a joy to watch him, especially his interactions with Venkman, where the two actors clearly had a lot of fun filming. Honestly, the humor in this movie is definitely a lot more mature than I remember as a kid, and it's funny to me when people say they watch it with their whole family. Not that it's not family friendly, it's just that most of the jokes, be it spoken or visual ones, are definitely not jokes a kid would understand. Ghostbusters gets funnier the older you get because it's then you understand and appreciate the genius of this movie. I think that's why the sequel and most of the reboots failed. Because the sequels and reboots try to make the movies and the universe a lot more mild and kid friendly rather than keep the more mature tone. It's this mature tone mixed with the over the top humor that works so well in the first place. Is this true? Yes, it's true. This man has no dick. 